Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to another video and today we are going to be reviewing the Creality CR10 3D printer. So this is going to be my final review, my final thoughts, and how my experience went with it for the past three months. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First of all, we have a bunch of large prints as guys requested in the last video. So here we go. And in this video, it's pretty much going to be the print quality, the experience, and what I have learned so far and stuff that I recommend trying out and doing with the printer. So in this video we have large prints, medium prints, and small prints that we have seen in the last video, and overall just some very detailed prints. Alright, so first of all we have this prior gun from TF2 right here, and we printed this and we showed it off in the last video, and you can see how detailed it is, you can even see the trigger right here, it's still there, it is perfectly printed out, and you can still see the detail. Now on this side it doesn't look very clean, and that's because the model was printed in a way that it's not optimized, but this is just a quick look to see how small it can get. You can see the trigger, you can see this thing, and they're very nice and solid, very nicely printed, and you can tell what it is from far away. Here's another example of a 3D model uh, that wasn't optimized for 3D printing. This was basically just scanned in and pasted onto a 3D printer. It's not a clean model to begin with. It looks pretty detailed for a really bad model. I mean, if you look at the original model, it looks very mushy, but overall it looks pretty cool, and it's really tiny. Here's the tiny whistle we had printed in the last video. It's pretty cool, it printed out very nicely, and it does work. Here's another whistle, and this is actually my first print, I believe, on the printer, and this came out amazingly well. I mean, this was 100% infill, and the quality it printed out was just amazing. This, by far, is my favorite print out of anything that I've printed so far. And overall, it just printed out just amazingly well. And again, this was my first print on the printer, so I didn't have to reprint it because of the settings were wrong. I just went ahead and put some standard settings and printed it out. And basically, it turned out amazingly well for the first print. And we have one last whistle, and it's actually a train whistle, and it plays very nicely. Next up we have some low poly charmanders that were printed with two different brands of filament. One is the MH3 brand that I got from Amazon and the other one is the Anet brand that I got from Gearbest. And they both print perfectly fine with the printer with the same settings and the print quality is pretty nice. The MH3 brand has more of a glossy finish and the Anet brand has more of a matte finish. We have this TF2 soldier that was printed with 100% infill I believe and you can see that it didn't print out perfectly fine. You can see how its face is kind of broken and that is because it's not perfectly optimized for printing but overall you can still see the fingers and that is pretty impressive and overall it turned out pretty great. The black you see here, I actually painted it with Sharpie, but overall it turned out pretty good. You can still tell what it is, and it looks pretty great, and it does stand on its own. And yes, there's still a lot of detail left in it, but, but once again, it's not a perfectly optimized print. Now obviously I can improve the settings and probably get a perfect print, but overall it's not too bad. Here's a torture test that I printed out, and it's kind of a G-spiral, and basically this is supposed to have a bunch of things that can stress test the 3D printer. So it has spirals, uh, freestanding things, grooves, you name it. And I'll leave links for all of these guys in the description. And pretty much it passed all the things except for this part right here. It's kind of wonky. And that's because it's kind of freestanding. But overall, it turned out pretty great. You can see all the details. You can also see the grooves right here. And it is pretty good. So there you go. Next up we have the Eiffel Tower and it didn't come out perfectly fine and that is because it has a lot of detail. I mean there's a bunch of axes across and at the same time my settings have an issue with uh, stringing. There's a lot of stringing going on. There was no supports and I believe this was also 0% infill. Now I probably would have got better results if I enlarged it because the lines would be easily printed out without too many issues because most of the things here are very close to each other. But once again if you look at it from far away it still looks like a pretty good print and it's still something you can just look at and put somewhere else. And then you have things like this that are very nicely optimized and can work very nicely with a 3D printer. And you can see how detailed this thing is. It looks beautiful. There's a lot of detail in it. And you can see pretty much everything in here. You can see all the rooms. This is one of my favorite prints so far. And it turned out really nicely. Now you can see that the bottom here is kind of wonky. I did kind of fix it with a hot uh, razor by heating it up, pushing back the filaments in there. That's because it's freestanding right here. There's no support whatsoever. But once again, this is a great example of an optimized print. And these were all printed with the exact same settings, except for the infill settings, different on each of them. But this is something that I printed out in the last video, and it pretty much amazed me on how well it came out. Because you can see exactly all the little holes that are printed out, and none of them had any shoes printing out. It came out great. There was a lot of stringing inside between the holes, but I fixed that. But it is a really beautiful print, and you can see how well the printer can cope with that many holes. I mean, this is a fantastic model to print out to test out your printer, and especially when it has that many holes. So, yeah, it turned out great, it looks great, and it feels really nice and solid. And we're just going to cycle through these guys. There's a fidget spinner thing and you can see how it cracked it is and that's because it contracted and I ended up having to hammer down a bearing inside of it and obviously that cracked it and kind of lost balance but 
If I printed it out just a tiny bit bigger and after it contracts, it probably would have been a better print. Here's one last example of a bad print and this is mostly my fault. And, but you can see most of the details here, how well it came out. It looks pretty nice. And most of the defects you see here are on the flat surfaces. And that's because I actually printed this model out with zero infill, which is a big mistake, especially when you have something thick and a big flat surface. So everything under here didn't have anything to grab onto. Basically, it just ended up getting bubbly because there was nothing to support it. But if I printed out this once again, and put at least 15% in film, this would have came out almost a perfect print. You can see how clean the bottom is, and that is actually because I used glue stick instead of the tape, which I'll talk about at the end of the video, which is something I definitely recommend doing on this printer. But yeah, this is my fault that this came out this way. It took about 15 hours to print out, but it turned out really nicely, and you can still see all the detail. Here's another Pokemon that is low poly, and you can see how well the detail came out. Another okay-ish optimized print, now, on the bottom here, you can see there's a lot of problems here, and that is because the model was kind of messy. And when it printed out, it actually printed out a shadow, which it transformed into a filament mess. And that's because the model isn't perfectly optimized for 3D printing. It wasn't cleaned up perfectly fine. But if you just ignore the bottom and the shadow that was printed out that I removed, uh, obviously, um, it turned out really nicely, and you can still see all the detail. And you can see there's zero info on the inside, but there's a lot of stringing inside as well. And that is because my settings aren't perfect. But with my type of settings, it's kind of a worst case scenario for a beginner. This is the result that I got from this printer. So it turned out pretty great. And these parts are actually pretty sharp. And I almost punctured myself once when picking this guy up. And yeah, zero info. And two last things from the last video we have seen before. And these are the headphone stands from the MakerBot uh, edition. They were both printed out with the exact same settings. I think 25% infill and with supports. And you can see how the back kind of is messy here, but I cleaned it up because I sanded it down because that's where the sports is. And the print, they both printed out basically like this. And the quality and the how solid it is and how perfect it came out is just really nice. So these were actually my first large prints that are printed out on the printer here. And they both turned out very, very nicely. But yeah, I should really experiment with my settings and improve them. But I'm still happy with the results that I'm still getting with the exact same settings that I set up since getting the printer. And we have one last medium print right here, and this is just kind of a vase, or a vase, or whatever you want to call it. And it pretty much turned out really nicely, zero infill, and it looks beautiful. It does hold water without any leaks whatsoever. And there was a lot of stringing on the inside, but that was fixed by just removing it manually or heating it. And yeah, it turned out really nicely. It works, and it is just a really beautiful print that I would print once again, probably even larger. And here it is, filled up with water, zero drips, really nice. And finally, let's take a look at the last bad print. This is the spaceship from No Man's Sky. I'm not a fan of No Man's Sky. I haven't played it. I don't really care. But this was a bad print because if you take a look at here, we have a bunch of bad joints. And that is because I printed this with zero info. Now, I originally printed it out and it came out like this. It was actually three pieces. I started this back on. So it was one, two, and three. And I went ahead and reprinted it where I should have actually reprocessed the file, the G code file, and added some info to give it some structure on the inside because. This is zero infill, I scaled it up, and obviously when you scale models up in Cura, it doesn't always come out perfectly fine. When I printed it, it did come out perfectly fine, everything looked fine, it was all in one piece, until I came to test it out, and then things kind of broke apart. It was one, two, three, four, and five. And went ahead before starting this video, and I went ahead and just uh, soldered it back on using a soldering iron and some filament to fill out some gaps, and it now is a perfectly strong structure. It is not going anywhere. And I can even hold it with this little piece right here and it's still perfectly fine. I know it is pretty heavy and it is very, very solid. Now, if I had printed it with at least 15% info, this would have came out a beautiful model. But overall, it turned out really good. And uh, if you want to print this model, you can just print it out. Make sure you add some infill and scale it up if you want. But yeah, my fault on that. But overall, it is a really beautiful print. It is really large and it looks great. And you can just definitely put it on display and take a look at it. Very nice. Next up, we have the rocket right here. It turned out pretty great. It's a pretty large rocket, and it is really, really solid. And also zero infill, and you can see how solid it is. It's very nice. All the layering is almost perfectly fine. Now, you could see some ridges, and that's because of the 3D model and how it's uh, designed. And again, this was scaled up, so these are more obvious now. There were some stringing here and there, and some uh, things like this. And that's because of my settings. Once again, they're not perfect, but... If you tweak your settings, you will get something much, much better. And yeah, then went ahead and printed a G rocket, and it turned out really nicely as well. Zero info, printed out with the Amaze 3D brand filament, and it looks beautiful. I mean, all the detail, you can see clearly all the detail on this thing. It looks really nice and beautiful, very nice and solid, feels great, 
everything here is just completely solid nothing was going on but yeah you can see how smooth the bottom is and that's because i was printing it on the glass with a glue stick because that's the best method that i found with this printer and i'll talk about them just a bit and yeah it really turned out really nicely and i went ahead and printed it one more time super scaled it and tried to get as big as of a height as i can and this i believe turned out at 15.5 inches or so almost uh, almost 400 millimeters around 395 or something i'll put the information right here but yeah this is pretty much the full height of the printer it printed out at max height and it looks awesome so this was scaled up i think this was 140 percent scaling i'm not too sure but either way this is a full scale print and once again zero percent infill and all the details still there turned out beautifully and yeah this is one of my favorite prints so far and this detailed model right here is a great example of an optimized model for 3d printing and you can see how everything turned out really nicely and that's of course thanks to the optimization and how it was designed so yeah awesome print very nice and solid feels great there you go and finally we have some burj khalifas right here first printed out the blue one turned out great printed out with the red one also turned out great exact same settings and the uh, repeatability of the performance was great at this point i could just pretty much print out some souvenirs and hand them out to people but yeah it turned out really nicely especially this part right here it's very nice and solid you can see how springy it is and not now the real thing has balconies and everything more windows more detail but obviously if those were printed out you'll end up with a bunch of messy parts bunch of messy strings and it wouldn't come out that nice so another example of a good print you know make it less detailed but not only by making it less detailed make it look minimalistic and beautiful looking once it is printed out. So that is pretty much it for the prints. Uh, you guys have pretty much saw everything that I've printed out so far in the past three months. And you guys have pretty much saw all the errors that I've had. The only bad misprint that I got, like full misprint. These are the prints that I've done in the past three months. They turned out pretty great. And most of the errors you guys have just saw are because of zero and full user error or because of a not so optimized model for 3D printing. And before we go to the conclusion, let me go ahead and show you guys what I've done with the print bed and how I print my prints. And here's the printer itself, you've seen this tons of times, but yeah, it's uh, very solid, still working perfectly fine. The controls here are very nice and easy to control, very responsive, didn't have an issue with it. The SD card is really easy to access, the filament holder is very useful, and if you take a look at here, you can see that the bed is no longer a glass piece, it's actually a mirror. And I'll have a separate video talking about this, but long story short, the bed that I came with, I was unfortunate, I didn't find anyone else with the same problem, but my glass bed that I came with was actually warped. So I went ahead and went to Ikea, and found two of these guys, two of these mirrors for 240 each was a great deal. They were used or as is or whatever. And basically they have a flat surface on the back and I just put it on and print out. Now it doesn't go all the way to the edge, but that's fine. I'm not printing cubes. And I don't use the clip method. I use tape to hold the piece around. And I no longer use this annoying tape. Although it is a really good tape, it's really sticky and it really does hold your prints in place. I did not enjoy using it. It is annoying. Every time I want to clean it, you got to get some goo gone and clean it up. And it was just a big hassle to clean up and reapply. So I went ahead on Amazon and grabbed some all-purpose Elmo's glue, 12 pack for like $16. And I've been using the same glue stick with this exact same plate for the majority of my prints. And it saved me so much stress and so much of the hassle that I had originally with the tape method right here and the original bed. Now again, I didn't find anyone else having the same issue. So it was just me and my luck, but most people they just go to the doll store and grab a photo frame with a square glass piece. But yeah, I totally recommend using the glue stick method. It is awesome, but I'll have a separate video on that and talk about and comparing the differences between both of them. So yeah. All right, so the conclusion, is this printer worth its price? Well, currently it's being sold for around $400 using a coupon code that may expire very soon. Sometimes it drops to $360 using a coupon code. So if you're a beginner, should you get this or should you get something like the Anet A8 because it's budget friendly and you put it together and it's kind of fun. Well, my experience with the Anet, although it was fun at the beginning, it turned into a big hassle, a big headache and just a lot of stress and problems to deal with. Although it's fun and it's nice to do DIY stuff, it's not the best printer to get if you're a beginner and you don't have time. And overall, you just don't want to have a bad time with a printer. You just want to have a printer that works and it just prints and you get really good quality prints. Well, if you're looking for a good printer, I would definitely recommend getting the CR10. I was able to put the printer together under 15 minutes. It was a fun experience. It was great, it was quick, and the printer is a solid piece of hardware. It's not janky like plastic and acrylic. It is a complete metal build. And the control box that it comes with is fantastic. The menus are easy to access. It's very easy and simple. Although it does take a lot of space and it is big, it's something I'm willing to compromise over something that may catch fire and I might just end up with a bunch of problems with it 
like the ANET A8. But that said, if this printer is still too expensive for you and you don't need a 300 by 300 by 400 build surface, then I would recommend waiting and checking out the ANET E10, which is ANET's next printer. And it does look very, very promising because they kind of adapted the same design as the CR10, which is fantastic and that should save us a lot of hassle. So yeah guys, the printer is fantastic. It prints really good quality prints. The printer itself is really high quality. All the parts, never had an issue with them. It has been a very pleasant and fun experience and I'm very happy with this printer. And that is actually pretty much it guys for this video. So if you're a beginner or someone who's looking to prototype their product, definitely recommend getting the CR10. It's a fantastic printer with fantastic builds and a really awesome experience. Very simple and easy to use. Anyways, that is pretty much it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.